right, this last section, we're back to our green, our triangle relationship graphic organizer, just in case you forgot which that one, which one that was. Um, that was on this, but not that one. That's our midpoint. We, it's this one here. Okay, triangle relationships. You use this to help you problem solve. My last couple of problems here. Now, the first one is dealing with listing the angles and size in, in order from smallest to largest. So now, this is our relationship with size and angles. If you remember, the largest angle is always opposite. Largest angle, sorry. It's always opposite largest side and vice versa. So start with your largest, work your way back. So our largest side is right here at 27. We look opposite. That would be angle C. And then the next largest are 21. We look opposite. That is our angle A. Oops, I'm sorry. Not 21. 22. Apologize. That is our angle R. And then our angle A. Okay. So. Remember, vice versa. So if I give you the angle, you can find the side. So like on this one, there's no picture, but we can draw it. We know it's a triangle right there, triangle X, Y, Z. It doesn't have to be the scale. Triangle Y is 120, which obviously that's not the scale because that's obtuse. Z is 43. This is name the longest side. So before we can do that, we need to have all three angles. We need to find this missing angle here. So we know the sum of a triangle equals 180. So I'm just going to do 180 minus the 120 plus 43, which is 163. So that basically I have 180 minus 163, and that would give us what is it, 17. So our missing angle that we have left. So our missing angle that we have for x is 17. So now they want us to name the longest side of the triangle. Well, it has to be with the longest angle. So that longest side would be the x. Okay, it's opposite the biggest angle, which is angle y. Okay. So then when we get here, we're back to the orange graphic organizer. We're just going to mark the given again. A, D, is perpendicular to BC. They went ahead and did that for us. There's the box. AE bisects BAC. So here's AE. I'm going to put that in red. Bisects BAC. I put the arch there. The measure of angle B is 66. So I'm going to put that over here. 66. And the measure of angle C is 6, which is right there. And they want us to find the measure of DAE. EAE is this middle piece here, okay? So the way we're going to do that is first we're going to find the measure of angle A. How can we get to that measure angle A? Well, we know we have 180 minus our two angles here. And minus our two angles here would be 90, or 102, excuse me. We add the 96, I mean 66 and 36. So angle A is 78, okay? Now, we are going to divide that angle A because it's being bisected. So I'm going to divide that by 2. We should get 64, not 64, sorry, 34. Do, 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 where am I at? Oh, there we go. 39, sorry. 39. Okay, so to get to this little sliver that we're looking for in here, I'm going to use this triangle right there. I know this is 90, so this other side would be 90 as well. Okay, so I know that little arc here that I had with my red is 39. And I know I have this 36 over here. I have this 90, so I can find that missing piece by adding up the three angles that I have and subtracting from 180. I think you can do that one. Sorry, I'm surprised with my mental math. Then, this one is just saying if we have an angle PQR, or triangle PQR, PQR, and P 
PQ is congruent or congruent to PR. PS, so I gotta add that bisects QPR. So I'm gonna have to add that PS right there. And it's bisecting this angle here. And it lies on QR, which I did, which statement is true. So, so if, basically, if I have an isosceles triangle and this happens, where this segment bisects the vertex angle, then that segment is a perpendicular bisector. Okay, PS is perpendicular and it's a bisector. So, PS is perpendicular bisector of Q. R, the answer is A. It will do two things. It will be perpendicular and it will bisect. All right, so for our last little section here, purple notes to help you. I want to see if you can do these on your own. They are very similar to when we did 30 and 31. So if you want to go back and look at your steps on that. I do want to talk about 37. Okay, this is dealing with our inequalities comparing two triangles. So they want us to say what's related to LN and OQ. Well, here's my OQ. That's my blue segment. My LN is going to be my green segment right here. I look opposite, that's 125. I look opposite my blue segment, that's 78. But 125 is greater than 78, so that means that, exactly, LN has to be, that segment has to be greater than OQ, okay? And then we got some more midpoints and mid-segments, so what it's basically saying is Y is the midpoint, or boom, right there, two tick marks of ON. They want us to find XY and YZ. Uh, YZ is, or no, XY, Y. Z, Y. So, X, Y, we know X, Z right here is parallel to this side, and it would be half this side, half that 18 would mean that's 9, and then when I look at Y, Z, Y, Z is parallel to this side here, the same relationship. And so, using that property, using our point, our mid-segment notes, help you finish this. Thank you for doing your review. Study your color papers or study your graphic organizers, your tables, study your, um, your midpoint and distance, look at your class practice, look at everything we've done in our spiral to help you prepare. And come to tutorials if you have questions. Have a nice night studying.